on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. in here tonight who might have some lost children their children not might be saved but the Lord wants to let me wants me to tell y'all y'all prayers are not in vain y'all fasting is not in vain <laughs> I was lost myself I was lost myself oh my mama used to she tried her best she tried her best she gave up with her words and said you know what I'm fasting for him and now look at me oh Lord Jesus thank you for revelation oh I was a diehard Trinitarian yes I was ask my mom I'll be like no no he said Father Son and Holy Spirit he said Father Son and Holy Spirit she said no he said the name I said no it doesn't matter he's not gonna lie to me oh I was deceived I was deceived I was deceived Yes, but thank him. Thank him for the revelation. But he just wants me to let y'all know because he's not a respecter of person. If he can do it for my mom, he can do it for y'all. Because my mom was promised on Acts 2.39 that her children, and now look at me. I'm an Acts 2.39 promise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who oh, I just... The Lord just wanted me to let y'all know that. I was asked if I could give my testimony to help. And it actually helped me. It really did. Um, because sometimes we can forget those chains that he broke. So whenever I was asked, I had to go back. I had to go back and I had to remember who I wanted to be. I thought I had a purpose in this world. First time I ever came to church, I got to Matthew 5, 14 through 16. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that sitteth on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Which leads me, my true purpose is to shine. Come on. Good, brother. Come on now. That's all right. At some point in time in our life, we're going to ask ourselves a very important question. What is the purpose of life? Huh. Come on now. Some may even ask, do I even have a purpose? And if so, what is it? All right. Pretty good question, right? All right, sir. All right. Yes. But what is purpose? So I went. And I looked up the definition. It says the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Growing up as a child, I didn't understand purpose. And I remember in school they always ask you, when you grow up, what do you want to be? So, you know, some of us might think, oh, I want to be a cop, a firefighter, and things of this nature. Me, I wanted to be a football player. Well, I'm only 5'5". Five, five. That don't work out in reality. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Thank the Lord I didn't hold on to that dream. <laughs> but as we grow up, our mind does change. Changes a lot. The reason, some, is because unexpected things happen in our life. You know, things we didn't plan for or things that we didn't even expect yes. tragedy happens we got deaths in our families our friends somebody I was real young when I had a, a friend of mine he died he was 17 years old 17 years old he died a, he died of heart failure 
at the age of 17. When he died, I felt that I, was never, I wasn't going to reach that age. I felt that I can die young too. It still didn't change my life. So, you know, then we have relationships that fall apart. And some of us, there's divorces between our parents. These things soon make you stray away from your purpose. Then instead of keeping your focus on the purpose, you start focusing on the problem, which leads you to chasing feelings. You know, things that make you feel good. Things that make you feel better. Well, I'm here to tell you from experience, just because it feels good does not mean it is good. All right? All right, before y'all think I don't understand what y'all going through, I did lose focus of my purpose. When emotional problems piled up on me, which was my parents and a girlfriend. Before my wife, just like any teenager, I thought I knew what love was. I had puppy love. <laughs> well, <laughs> I got deep into it. At least I did. I got my heart broken. Well, that right there led me to lose sight of my purpose, and I started chasing feelings. I tried to find something that would help with that pain, that emotional. I mean, I can punch you in the face right now, brother, but when I punch you in the heart, it's going to hurt you worse. And I got punched in my heart. That bruise is going to heal, but it's going to take time for my heart to heal. And it did. I asked my mom. She was there. I wouldn't even eat, brother. I, was, I wouldn't eat. I was hungry. But I was so depressed that I didn't want to eat. My, my, my. Any of one of y'all. I know how that feels. So, I try to look for something in the world that would help with this emotional pain. And growing up where I grew up, it was drugs and alcohol. Right. So I really relied on these things to try to help me. And then after that, my view of women wasn't the same. I thought all of them were the same. Oh, they're all going to do me wrong. So I said, you know what? I'm not looking for love. I'm not looking for love. So my mom, about nine years old, you know, she had left. My dad was a, a drug addict. And when I mean a drug addict, I mean we had no lights and an igloo refrigerator, an igloo cooler as a refrigerator. Bologna, hot sauce, and bread. No hot water. That's how bad he was. He had a good paying job. Real good paying job. So, That right there led me to believe that my only purpose on this earth was prison and death. I felt those were the only two things that were promised to me. I had a brother, he was always in and out since he was young, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. I was the youngest out of seven children. So seeing this, you believe this because ain't nobody a pastor around where I was. Nobody was a Christian, well, a true Christian. Um, so that's the kind of mentality. So what that mentality did to me, it made me real rebellious. I'm talking about rebellious. I was a know-it-all. You can't tell me nothing. And just like some of y'all, I was always right. I was always right. Come on now. I was always right. Ask my mom. Ask my wife. Brother, you know that shirt's pink. But if I believe that, that shirt was yellow, I was right. That's how ignorant I was. No lie. Come on now. That's good stuff. Good word. Good. Okay. I got introduced to rap. See, rap's different from a lot of music. Because, you know, you got some that are this. You feel like, man, that, I can't relate to that stuff. Mine was rap. Man, I'm talking about for once. For once. I'm going through all this pain. I'm crying. I'm poor. I feel like 
nobody cares about me. So I started hearing these rappers, and for once it felt like somebody else understood what I felt. You know, these guys talking about pain, struggling, having many women, selling drugs, all this nonsense, and the top of the list was money. I was young, I'm just like y'all. I thought, hey man, once I get this money, yeah, yeah, me and all my friends thought that. No, I was wrong again. So when I started, I fell in love with it to where I started writing it. And once you write this, you got a lot of guys that will sit there and question, is he really about what he says? So I was like, okay, well, uh, all right, I'm going to do some stupid things to prove that I live out what I rap about. <laughs> Tell you I was ignorant. And guess where that got me? I was riding around with a couple of friends back in 2009. It was December. We're riding around. We're looking to, you know, get high. And we got pulled over. One of my buddies thought, it, hey, if I get caught, I'm going to go ahead and eat it. Well, that messed it up for everybody in the car. So I advise y'all, anybody around drugs, leave. You don't need it. You're better than that. You're better than that. You're better than that. Each and every one of y'all are better than that. My nephew's about y'all age. He's 15. Y'all might be a little older. And I always tell him. I always. I just got off the phone with him today. And I told him. I don't care what they call you. Oh, you scared. Oh, you a punk. Let them call you whatever. As long as they don't call you an addict, you're okay. So I told him. I told him. Why fit in when you can stand out? I told them, if there's six people and they're all smoking, your dreams being just like them. You're fitting in. Stand out. Stand out. Because they're going to get to a point in their life where they're going to need you. And if you ain't that light, you're darkness. Sorry to say. But there ain't in between. So what God tells me. All right, I got put on probation for possession of marijuana in January of 2010. By May of that same year, which is like four months apart, I violated what a state jail felony. Wow. Why? Because, hey, I'm a rapper, right? We always party. We stayed up all night drinking. All night. I'm walking around El Campo with some basketball shorts and no shirt. And my shorts about right here. I'm talking about, I, I would walk the, from where I was, I went to, it was around Triska's funeral home, if anybody's familiar with El Campo, to McDonald's, into Rubens, right there by the high school, all without a shirt. And my drawers is hanging out like I own the world. So, I, I go inside this building and didn't know it was gonna give me a felony. Well, you know what the part I forgot to tell y'all? Is that I was supposed to be graduating in June. Y'all pretty smart, right? May, June, just right there, huh? And guess what? I got a violation of probation. You know what that gives you in jail? A no bond. Seven kids my mom had, I was the only one to graduate from high school. Seven kids. My mom didn't even get to see me walk the stage. Because I was ignorant. Because I thought my purpose was to be like the world. Yeah. Ignorant. You're all big and bad and tough. And a man. Until you visit your mom through a glass wall. Talk about break a man. Woman. They gave birth to you. My mom did everything but try. She did everything but try. I turned around and looked like my dad didn't care about me. Seemed like he loved drugs more than me. And here I was, speaking through my mom through a glass wall. Wow, that's love, ain't it? The Bible says love's an action. Oh, that's love, ain't it? She was there. That's love, ain't it? Mom. 
So, when I was in jail, I made a promise to God. I prayed and I said, look, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll quit. I'll stop doing all this. I'll change my ways. I got out on five years probation. Ten times harder. I couldn't smoke no more. It's already lied on alcohol. I became an alcoholic overnight. And I told my nephew that today. I tell him, all it takes is one beer for you to become an alcoholic. One beer. That's my wife. She probably didn't even see it. It happened so fast. Before I knew it, I quit working. I worked, I was 15 a couple of weeks, about two weeks until I was 16 when I first got a job and I always worked. Well, I was like, pff, I think a month, five years probation a month. I got this scar right here on my hand. Goes from about there right there. That's what a razor blade does to you. Because I thought I was all big and bad. Didn't know somebody had a razor blade, cut me right open. I could have violated right then and there. And my probation, because you're not supposed to be drinking. And I was honest with him. I said, yeah, I was drinking. He's all like, you know you're not supposed to be drinking on. I play dumb. No, I didn't know. Well, yeah, I'm going to let you know you're not supposed to be drinking. I said, all right. I still didn't learn. So, <coughs> remember that promise I told you all made? I didn't keep it. Bible tells me not to make a promise. But I did. I didn't read it, but I did. So this is 2010. By 2012, my wife got pregnant with my son. I was still an alcoholic then. You know what? I love y'all because y'all y'all want real. So I'm about to give y'all real. But my mom... When my wife told me she was pregnant with my son, it was like tragedy to my ears. I was supposed to be happy. She told me on my birthday. I was supposed to be happy. It was tragedy to my ears. She can tell by the look on my face. I wasn't happy. I was selfish. It was me, me, me. Listen to those rappers, who they talking about. Are they talking about their friend making money, or are they talking about them making money? Are they talking about their buddy over there driving a fancy car, or are they talking about them driving a fancy car? That's selfish. That's selfish. I never intended to become an alcoholic. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I never did. Never wanted to. Never, never sat down in class and said, all my purpose is to be an alcoholic. But hey, when you allow the devil to plant a seed in you, that's what you get in return. And I sure didn't want to raise a kid being an addict. I grew up in that environment. My wife, she was five months pregnant when I gave up. I just gave up on it. I said, I got to. Because if I don't now, I'm never going to stop. I remember when I did, there's a guy that I don't know real well that tells me, oh man, don't stop. You know, your baby ain't even here. Mm. You know, and even when they get there, they're not going to know. Does that sound familiar to you? Oh man, you ain't got to be a Christian now, man. Come on, man. Come on, forget that, man. Jesus loves sinners, don't he? Then he comes to earth for sinners. Come on, man. Come on. Let's go. Man, you can, you, when you're 18, you can repent, man. But right now, let's have some fun. Mm. Right. Right. Come on now. You always hear it. You always hear it. Salvation starts. There's a reason. Because if it don't start now, it ain't never. I hate to burst your bubble. But like I so, told Sister Kim, I said, the devil's been lurking around way longer than we've been living. We're sitting here trying to figure out a man or a thing or whatever he is that's been around for thousands of years. 
My mom's going to be 55. She ain't even old enough to comprehend his offense or his defense because he's been lurking. He's been lurking too long. So, well, you think I didn't give up there? When I stopped drinking, I started focusing on my rap music. So, just like I told you, I remember, rappers are real selfish, real pride, prideful people, real prideful. I started making music. The more people liked it, the more it made me prideful. I was outside my brother's house one time. There's a guy, he was driving a truck, does a U-turn, turns up his radio just to let me know that he was listening to my song. You know how prideful that makes you? Makes you very prideful. And guess what happened? I landed a good paying job, brother. I was 23 years old. I was a couple of hundred dollars short of that year of making $50,000. For a 23-year-old caught up in the road, that is money. Now, a 23-year-old caught up in the road and that's a rapper, oh, that's pride. I remember one time, I was standing in a circle, and I noticed everybody in that circle was older than me. I had like $250 pair of Jordans on my feet. I used to wear like starter and one shoes. You know what I mean? Growing up with hoes in them. I'm talking about dudes in school used to remember when I got new shoes. Because I had hoes in mine. And guess what I thought? Instead of sitting there saying, hey man, we can do this together. I thought all of them were crabs in a bucket. Because they didn't have what I had. Because I drove a better car than them. Guess what I got planted in my heart? A spirit of hate. And the last time I read that Bible, hate don't come from my God. Because he loveth the sinner, but hateth the sin. Okay, so what does that mean? Then I got the reading, and it says that he made man in his image. And here I was hating them, so basically in reality, if I hated the way they looked, I hated the way God looked. Ah. Scripture says we're made in his image. I read that thing, made sure it didn't say John's so at least it's supposed to be better than him. I couldn't find it. But I thought I did. I thought I was supposed to be better. Here I was. Here I was. Here I was. Grew up in that environment. I grew up poor. But right when I got money, remember my problem solver? It became my problem. Seven kids, seven kids my mom has. I used to love it when my older siblings called me to borrow money. I loved it. It felt, it made me feel like a man. I just felt like, oh, look at them. Their younger brother. They got to ask me for money. That same year, I made $1,600 in bonuses that year. So I was like, all right, I got this rap thing going, everybody's loving it, then I'm loved at my job, then I got a, a, a woman who's faithful to me, man, I'm on top of the road, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I feel like I'm something. So, That's when we finally, me and my brother, we finally did start performing our music. At first, I was just making it, you know, putting it on YouTube, SoundCloud, all this craziness, trying to be something I wasn't. So when we finally got to performing, more people liked it. And then I, was, I had a guy promote my music out of state. He had his little radio station, playing my music on there. I thought I was doing something. Let me take y'all behind the scenes of rap. Just because y'all see these music videos and hear these songs on the radio does not mean these people are doing something. They are paying to be played. Take it from me. I had to pay for that stuff. I was so selfish. I used to come home. I wouldn't even care about my family. I cared about my music. I'd get on laptop, check how many plays I got, see how I can promote it here. 
what new song I can do. And then I'll go to sleep. No time for my wife, no time for my child. But I had a seed planted in me. I actually thought I was doing something. I actually thought I was someone. Reminds me of Ecclesiastes 2, 10 through 11. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion for all my labor. I did. Like I just told you, I was real prideful. I thought I was doing something. So yeah, man, I worked. I mean, I became a welder. I didn't even have to go to school for it. And I'm all like, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy in, in the things. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I read 11. It says, I looked on all the works that my hands had done, wrought, and on the labor which I had labored to do, and behold, all were vanity and vexation of the spirit. And there was not one profitable under the sun. If I would have died then, none of it was profitable. None of it would have saved your soul. None of it would have saved your soul. None of it would have helped your life. It was all meaningless. You know what they call that in the Bible? Chasing after that wind. I was just talking to my wife about that. Let's see what happens when you run. We run every day. We run every day and we're going to get skinny. Well, I wasn't running. My flesh wasn't running after the wind. My spirit was. My spirit soon became anorexic. Because I ran so much after the wind. Can you catch the wind? You? None of y'all, right? Nobody in here can catch the wind, right? As much as we want to, we can't catch the wind. But I could. I had a seed planted in me that told me I could. No, no, no. It was true. I was proud of what I had. I had a good job, a car, a house, expensive shoes and clothes. I was making a name for myself. Amen. But none of it was profitable. Amen. Now I want to get on y'all level. I want to get on y'all level. Y'all mind me to get on their level real quick? Okay. When I was a youth, I believed in God. But you know what? And that Christian life puts you in chains. That's what I thought. Man, you can't wear this, you can't do this, you can't watch that. And what fun is that? Christ don't put you in chains, brother. He breaks them. Come on now. You never know how much change you have and how much they weigh till you get washed. I got married on August 27th and baptized on August 28th. When I got baptized, I was 50 pounds lighter. That's how heavy my chains were. I got a question for y'all. Why doesn't anything in the world last? You notice TV shows don't last? There's no engine that lasts forever? Relationships don't last forever because we all die or break up. Nothing, nothing that we grab a hold of Nothing that little Wayne tells you. Nothing. Nothing lasts forever. Except one thing. One thing. And that's the word because heaven and earth will pass. Will pass. But his word, his word will remain. Yeah. Everything is temporary. Everything is temporary. Amen. Brother. You're smarter than that. You're smarter than what they tell you are. You're smarter than that. You're better than that, brother. 
You're more beautiful than that makeup, sister. Hey, you're better than that. All oh, y'all are better than that. Don't let them lie to you. Brother Wally doesn't come up here and say the devil is a liar because he wasn't lied to. Come on, now. You want to know why he's so passionate? Because he knows. He knows. That's why he's passionate. He's not hard because, oh, he doesn't love you because he doesn't want you lost. Because it's not his will for his children to be lost in the wilderness. That's what that world is. That's wilderness. Brother, take a look at your hands. Do me a favor. Take a look at your hands. You hold hope in them. You hold hope in them. But as long as you're being like them, you're hopeless. That's right. Yeah. Ah. That's right. That's good. Good work. Good. good work. Good work. Good work. I was talking to my wife. I was at a, a, a what is it, Cracker Barrel? The first time we went there. And I was talking to my wife how this is a godless world. Right? We got done. The woman. The woman. Uh, for real, I was. I was. I was. I just heard this song called Godless. You know what I mean? And he's talking about how the world's godless. And he starts mentioning all this stuff. I listen to Christian rap like all the time. I love it because it gets down to a level that really helps me. And um, so I'm sitting there. And the lady puts her check there. And on there says, God bless you. I don't know if you looked around. But the world's trying to demolish what we have. Yes, sir. For real. They don't want this. They think it's meaningless. Uh -huh. They think we sell false hope. So much that our sister came. There's people out there willing to kill us just to stop us from it. Yes. It's hard to say. They got a seed planted them in, in them too. So the reason I say we hold hope in our hands I said, man, this woman, she's doing everything. You know, real good waitress. She's doing everything. I said, man, let's give her, let's give her a pretty good tip. How fast can you hold on to twenty dollars? You real good with money? That thing just goes right, <laughs> right. So it's like, man, what is twenty dollars gonna do for somebody, brother? I'm gonna tell you. I tipped her twenty dollars. That's all it was. Twenty dollars. She said, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I got five kids at home. Wow. That moment I gave her hope. Yeah. I gave her hope. I shined my light. Yeah. I gave her hope. Give them hope, brother. Give them hope, brother. Give them hope, brother. Those people are drowning. They're drowning. They're drowning. They want somebody to save them. The ignorant most thing I heard growing up was, hey, why can be one in jail when both of us can be there? A true friend will be in jail for you. No, a true friend will be preaching the word to you. Because that's the only thing that's going to help you. That's the only thing that you can rely on. Because that's the only thing that's eternal. Everything's temporary. Brother, you don't know how much has been on my heart. Pastor said, hey. I want to see if you can help them. It helped me, like I said. This helped me. Yes. It gave me a burden I didn't have. I look around. Let's be honest. Let's be honest, young, younger generation in here. Look around. What's the age limit in here? Let's be honest. Look at the age. If my sister goes home, who's going to fill in her spot? Who's going to fill in her spot? That woman's a prayer warrior. I'm going to brag about my sister for a little bit. If you don't know how to pray, don't go around her. <laughs> I'm saying, it's over here. <laughs> she pray out your shoes. I came in one morning, pastor starts praying. He knocked me out my shoes. I'm a <laughs> I'm trying to focus. He's praying so hard, so hard. That's what I'm saying. Look at my brother here. You want to know my honest opinion? Can I tell you my honest opinion, brother? My brother's been in the battlefield for so long, spiritual warfare for so long. He needs rest. He needs rest. But the Lord's not going to leave his spot open. 
Because now the enemy is going to be attacking us from the back and the front. You want Brother Manuel healed? Take up his spot. I'm here to tell you, you can live for God at a young age. You're worth more than what you think you are. Your brother, your brother, you're better than that. You're better than that. Y'all better than that. That's right, brother. Amen. Look around. Let's be honest. Brother McLean has gone. Man, I came in over here uh, on a home going for Brother Patterson, thinking I was going to help. Now it helped me. You want to know how it helped me? I looked around and his fruits were everything. The Bible says you judge a man by his fruits, a person by the fruits. His fruits were everywhere. His fruits were everywhere. Everybody was chained because that man did something that was eternal. He gave him the word. Man, I sat back in that corner. I was over there. I said, man, that's how I want to die. I don't want to die the same, brother. You want to die the same? You want to die the same? Oh, let's just put them in the ground, weep a little bit. Huh? Everybody dies that way. But die with something. Somebody can sit there and grab that microphone and sit there and say, that brother, when I was down, when I was ready to give up, felt like I was in a position that I was just ready to give up, came, and he changed my life with the gospel. He gave me hope because I... Cling to a world that was hopeless. Man, they got them, them vacuum cleaners. What are they? Them real expensive ones. Dyson, right? Dyson's. Okay, thank you. I'll tell you what, that world will suck you in faster than a Dyson. For real. For real. The devil looking at Dyson like, y'all ain't doing it right. That's how quick he is. Since he's a lion waiting to devour, he tries to have that one bite might. Trust me, he ain't trying to go in for another bite. He's trying to get you with one hit. But you're better than that, right, brother? Why? Because you got friends that are lost. You love your friends, don't you? You want them lost? You want them just like me? Selfish? Know it all. An alcoholic. By the age I was like 18, I was an alcoholic. Because I graduated from high school early. I graduated like two months into my senior year. You know, I was done. I was just waiting to walk the stage. So all that time I had, I was working at Pizza Hut. So, you know, I didn't get too much hours. I partied. That's how I became an alcoholic. That's how. Because I took something I was giving unto the Lord and helped me get done with it earlier. And I took that blessing and said, mm, I'm going to use it for me. Put that on my pride. I said, hmm, I'm going to wear that. I'm going to wear that. I was at uh, Pentecostals of Rosenberg. If y'all ain't never been there, it's real good, you know. And uh, they were having a revival. Brother Michael Barrier was up there. And I love what he said. He said, young people, we need to walk up. We need men to go up to the pastor and say, I back you up with my prayer. I back you up with my fasting. Yes. Yes. Right. My sisters in here, my brothers, they've been fighting this fight a long time. We love them, don't we? I hope my brothers, and I tell them I love y'all, don't I? Okay, if I really love them, I'll tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, get you some rest. I'm going in. Because every warrior, every warrior, every warrior needs to sit back. And his buddy, that's a warrior, going to fill in his spot until he's ready. And that's how y'all do it. That's how y'all do it. When one gets wounded, one steps in. That one gets wounded, he just recovers from getting wounded. And as long as we sit around and sit there and say, Brother Staines don't know what I'm going through. I don't even know why I'm here, man. My mom makes me come up here. <laughs> Brother, there's moms out there in the world that are taking their daughters to party. 
by the age of 18, those, those daughters have HIV. Thank your mom that she brings you to church. Yeah. One thing that I wish I could have did when I was your age is when I see my mom struggling, just grab her by the hand and tell her, we can do this. We can do this. But I didn't. Because I was a know-it-all. My mom would try to give me the word, brother. You know what I did? Because the devil knows word. I never read the Bible at the time. You know what I would tell my mom? Practice what you preach. Cut her all up. Devil knows scripture too. Remember I told you I had a seed planted in me. He knows scripture too. If I never read it, then where would I get it from? I was rapping about killing. I was rapping about drug dealing. Remember what I said? The Bible, you judge a tree by its fruits. That's what it says. So if I was rapping about killing, thou shalt not kill, right? If I was lying, thou shalt not lie, right? Adultery, fornication, I was rapping about all that stuff. I'm not supposed to be doing none of it. Now you tell me what kind of fruit I was. I was the one that gets cast down into fire, to be honest with you. But it's been a burden on me. Y'all more than what y'all look. As long as you look in that mirror in the, in the morning, brother, and say I'm worthless, that's what you are. I always tell my wife, you came with that attitude. My brother here, he got his calling. But if he looked in that mirror and said, I can't do it, it would have been pastor or whoever else. But he remembered, he remembered, the Lord's with me. He does not leave nor forsake. Man, I went out there and I fought some battles, brother. I fought some battles, but I never won one like I have when I received the Holy Ghost. I want y'all to know, I want y'all to know, y'all mean more than this church than what y'all think y'all do. I looked at my brother this morning, he was praying for one of our brothers, and I said, man, I told my wife, that's what we need to see. That's what we need to see. Those are the people we need to see. And sit there, I ain't going to let a, 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 a walker hold me down. I'm going to go pray for my brother. Oh, I remember them brother manual prayers. I'll be right here without the Holy Ghost. And my brother will be right here telling me, I'm not leaving until you get it. That's what I need to hear. That's what we need to hear. Now, who's willing to take my brother's spot? My brother needs rest. The best thing I said, oh, man, that brother's getting it because that's the best brother to be up there. You know, not saying nothing negative about any, but I remember those Brother Manuel prayers. I remember the encouragement. He never told me, oh, man, you're a sinner, you're dirt. No, no. He always prayed for me, Lord, Lord, Lord. He always spoke to the Lord. He wouldn't even speak to me. And he'll be up there. He'll be up there. He'll be up there. But the time's now. The time's now. Amen. He don't put you in chains, brother. No, I don't. Right. He don't. He breaks them. Yeah. He breaks them. Yes, you. You're smarter than what they tell you are. Thank you, God. Thank you, Noah. you know what's wrong with us sometimes? We block the truth and accept the lies. I heard one guy said, study a lie that can make new lies up. Study the truth and you can tell when a lie comes. Most of us lived in the road. 
but we're here for a reason. Because we got a hold of the truth. So don't tell me that you're going to find truth without being in Scripture. Don't let the devil lie to you, brother. You're smarter than that. Didn't I just tell you that? But I want you to tell yourself that. Not today only. Tomorrow when you wake up. The next day. The next day. Sister Delia, she was up here one time preaching about the, the Joshua generation. Ooh, got me fired up, got me fired up, got me fired up. But where's that Joshua generation? Where's that Joshua generation? You know what's wrong with us? Everything's fast nowadays. Everything's fast. Fast food, we get clothes fast. Movies come fast. Man, if nothing's shown on TV, I can go to Netflix, it comes fast. Everything's fast. Brother, if God gave you everything fast, he's not a God, he's a genie. That's what's wrong with us. We don't want to wait for prayer. It takes too long. Man, it takes a while to get results. Man, look at Brother Manuel. Man, no, forget that. Man, I'm going to go find something that works, man. That stuff don't work. It adds to your chain. Brother Walter can tell you. We drank a lot of beer. Drank a lot of alcohol. And woke up and had to do it again. Because it's, not temp it's temporary. It's not eternal. So for them to sit there and tell you that it works, it doesn't. Without telling you, brother, they're basically telling you, I need help. Amen. We got to know when our friends are telling us they need help. Without saying it. But you know what the Lord does? He builds up warriors. So the warrior waits. All y'all right here are warriors. All y'all. All y'all. We can raid for a prayer. Check it. I broke, I broke out. Uh, I messed up my back two years ago. I started getting addicted to pills. Why? Because, hey, pain, pain killers work with what, Brother Enrique? You can tell me right there. It don't work fast, take another one. Drink a little beer. It'll, it'll work even faster. Didn't oh, yeah. I just tell you how everything in the world comes fast? You want to know? Because you always hear the saying, you live fast, die young. Oh, the devil loves to tell you that. He wants you to die where you're at. That's, that, if you read the book of Job, he loves to. It's right in the beginning. You don't even got to get too deep. You're like, man, the book of Job is pretty long. No, man, just read the beginning. He gets a joy out of it. He gets a joy out of it. But like Brother Wardy just said, I'm going to stump on him. I'm going to put him where he belongs. You know how to do that? Keep on fighting. I tell, I tell people all the time, we give him, you hear it around here too, we give him more credit and we give him more power than he has. Right. That's right. My God is the Almighty. <laughs> but until he creeps in and tell you, Brother Sebastian, you're not a warrior, man. Come on. This guy's feeding you lies, man. Come on, man. No, you ain't worth nothing. Guess what you start telling yourself? You start looking in the mirror and forget what Brother Jonathan told you. You start saying, I'm worthless. And then that's when he creeps in. He gets you when you're vulnerable. He don't fight fair. He looks at you and says, I care less if you're down. I'm going to kick you. I don't care if you're knocked out. I'm going to kick you again. But I told my wife, we need brothers like this that are sit there and say, I'm not going to be bound by this because my God is stronger than that. My God is better than that. But as long as we rely on the world to give us our answers, we're never going to be like my brother. Because we're looking for the fast way out. No. Brother, I'm not telling you're a fighter because I'm not. I was just like you. Ask my brothers around here. Ask them. 
I used to come to these altars crying, crying, crying. And it wasn't because Jesus puts me in chains. It's because I allowed myself to have so much weight on me that he was the only way that I was going to get it off of me. I'm being, I'm being serious when I say this, for real. Peace Tabernacle, like I said, we got some prayer words up in here. So I used to come to those altars, and I had to make sure the Lord can hear me. Because I had some brothers and some sisters up here. They're trying to get theirs. And if I wasn't loud enough, if I wasn't mean, hey, they was going to get them. And I, hey, this is what I told my mom. When you first come to Christ, you have to be selfish. Let's be honest. You know, you have to be selfish. Because without the Spirit, you can't do nothing, brother. Amen. You can't do nothing without the Spirit. <laughs> so I had to be selfish. I had to come over here. You know, my sister probably could have been uh, hurt or something, but I knew I had to get mama because before I can help my sister, I have no Holy Ghost in me. You know? So that's why I say you have to be selfish. Brother Wally's not going to pull you to the side, brother. I see you at the altar. You're just praying for yourself. No, no, you need to be praying for others. No. Because Brother Wally knows his altar's experiences. Pastor knows his. All my brothers and sisters, nobody ever came up to me out there and said, why are you over there doing that for yourself? No. Because we all know. We all know. Without the Holy Ghost, man, we're vulnerable. We are very vulnerable without the Holy Ghost. Because we have no spiritual strength. You know what I mean? Like I said, we chase the wind so long that we, our spirit becomes anorexic. Remember? Didn't I just tell you all that? Because like I said, you start running. I wasn't feeding my spirit, brother. The only way to feed your spirit is to read. To die to yourself daily and read and pray and fast. I wasn't doing that. So I was anorexic in my spirit. So me to sit there and think that I can do anything without it, I was lied to again. I had to get it. I had to get it. And I, I remember, it was September 25th. Brother Manuel's family remembers that date. September 25th is the first day I received the Holy Ghost. I went home. I went to Pizza Hut after Pizza Hut. I called my sister because my sister, she was, like I said, she was one that knew I was lost and wanted me found. So she would try her best. She would try her best. So I called her. I called her. And I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm all like, out of everybody, he chose me. Out of everybody, he chose me. <laughs> Brother Wally's right when he says that. I didn't choose him. He chose me. So I'm sitting there crying. I'm crying. And my, my daughter at that time, she got the, uh, what's it called? Uh, hands, foot, and mouth disease or something of that nature. I don't know if some of y'all know about it. It was spreading around real bad. So she just got it. My son had got it. We weren't Holy Ghost filled. I wasn't baptized, nothing. So we had to do what everybody else does, go to the doctor and trust in the doctor. So my wife knows from experience that it gets worse, it gets worse, and it gets worse. So worse that I got a guy that I worked with that told me he had to take his daughter to the hospital twice because it just, it was outrageous. So I told my sister before I hung up the phone with her, I said, I got to go lay hands on my daughter. I go, and in the name of Jesus, what the Holy Ghost? The next day it was gone. I looked, I looked at a, a, couple, a couple of our cousin's babies. They got them. And, you know, it, 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 they were real scabby and stuff like that, real bad, you know. And it was, Brooklyn had nothing. It was nothing. No signs of it, no, no scars of it. It was all gone. It was gone. You know, I, I told a guy at work because, ooh, I, you know, I try my best to, you know, do what, what y'all did for me and to teach others. Well, there's one guy I had to, I had to be kind of, you know, I got to give him a little bit of steak because, you know, that's what he wants. So, 
I told him, well, hey, you know how you live in the truth? You know how you know your Bible's real, brother? Because you live out scripture. That woman made an Acts 2, 38, 39 promise. I was a diehard Trinitarian. I believe in one God, like my scripture tells me. She lived it out. There goes my proof. Amen. Believe in my name. She'll, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. I did it to my daughter. Yeah. I did it again with my cousin. But he did it again through me. Let me get that correct. My cousin, he was feeling real bad. He worked at Nanyo. And if you work at Nanyo, Nanyo doesn't play around with that missing days of work. So he's kind of, you know, bad. He's real bad. Real bad. So I said, you know, I just got through winning a battle, a spiritual battle. Brother, you know how that is. That fire get the going, you know? And so, you know, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. And I said, hey, you need me to pray for you? And he, I said, hey, don't avoid the question. Do you need me to pray for you? He said, man, I need prayer. So by the time I can get up, he was already, he was already ready. So I get up, I lay them hands on him. I felt the Holy Ghost go through my whole body and go to my hand that I laid on him. If he would have spoken tongues right then and there, I wouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> so I'm anxious, I'm anxious. You know, he's working night shifts, I'm working days, and I'm anxious to see him. I'm anxious to see him, right, brother? Because, you know, I'm ready to bra brag about my God. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm ready to brag about my God. So I said, hey, you feeling better? He said, man, in two hours, I felt better. Yeah. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because that's the truth. That's the only truth. All that stuff on TV, those are lies. All that stuff you hear in music, it's a lie. That's the truth. That's how I know it's true. Oh, I was fired up because I knew it wasn't him. I knew it was a devil. I wanted to say, hey, you should have tried two years ago. You might have would have convinced me, but I know what I got. I don't care what any scientist says. I don't care what evolution says. I live mine out. I'm not a puppet. That's what he said. Oh, man, you know, there's a lot of followers that said, hey, we ain't followers in here. We live out of scripture. We live out our scriptures around here. And then you wonder why our fire and our desire is so, so strong. Because we know what he can do. We know what he can do. Trust and believe. It's real hard, but it gets results. It gets results. So I want y'all to trust and believe that y'all can fill up my brother's spot while he gets healed. Because the God we serve does not leave nor forsake. So you do what Brother Wardy does. Because just because you got it in you and you told yourself you're a warrior doesn't mean that he won't come over there and test your warrior. But you let him know I'm Holy Ghost filled from the top to the bottom. So that foot that I stomped you with, that's the Holy Ghost. I know, like I said, I know, I know how it feels. I know, I know, and I just got a burden. I was talking to Brother Webb about it, and I was all like, "Man, I can just imagine," because I was y'all age. I was caught up in the world. I was, but I'm gonna tell y'all where I work. I've been there. This July will be four years. It's pretty hard for me too, because a lot of those guys remember the old me. A lot of them. So just because I'm Holy Ghost filled doesn't mean there are. And there's things I hear. There's things that I battle. Yes. 
There you go. We all do. So that means you got a sister in here or you got a brother in here that is willing to help you and sit there and say, I know, I know. Let's pray together. Because one can, a thousand, but two, ten thousand. We've got to be unified. That's the only way to win. Amen. You look at your brother and you tell your brother, hey, you're still fighting. Your brother tells you, yeah. Hallelujah. If he tells you no, say, hey, I got you with my prayer. Right. Your mom, she might go through something. You say, hey, mom, you're going through something, sister? Me and my mom sometimes call each other brother and sister. <laughs> and um, tell her, I got you with my praying. Amen. Pray for her right then and there, brother. That's, it. Amen. That's what your mom wants to see. Amen. I can guarantee you. You say you're a pitcher, right? You probably pitch 100 miles an hour. But your mom will be more happy when you start praying for her. Yes. <laughs> Let's go hold our mom's hands and tell her, I'm done being selfish, mom. I'm done. Because you love me enough to tell me not to cling to that stuff. Half these men and these women, we don't tell y'all to stay away from me because it works. We tell you because it doesn't. We know how it feels. I'm not coming up to you today saying I don't know how you feel. I'm telling you I know how you feel. I turned 25 years old today. I'm still young. I'm still young. Just like you. I got to go around temptation every day. Just like you got to go to school. There's some hours I work 50. You go to school 40. So it means 10 more hours I got to be around temptation. When stuff picks up, I'll be there 66 hours around temptation. But brother, when I tell you you're stronger than that, you're stronger than that. Man, the Lord's so good to us. He's so good to us. He's so good to us. He's so good to us. There's one thing I... I, I um, I tell my son, he always puts his head down. He's a child. But I tell him, don't put your head down. I said, the reason is because you make it seem like God doesn't do for his people. If you're being just like the world and you're supposed to be a Christian, you're saying God don't do for his people. I got to go look for the world. Because God doesn't do anything for me. But he does. He does. He does. He just wants you to believe. He didn't say, hey, give me your shoes first. And I tell your mom that she got to give me 100%, and then I can heal you. He tells like sister said, believe. Believe. That's all he wants you to do is believe that he can. Yes. You know, my God goes so far in Scripture that he says, test me in this. Uh -huh. Brother, you want to really see if he's God? Test him. You really want to see miracles can happen? Go lay your hands and pray for somebody. Do you really want to see mountains move? Let them, because, you know, we think mountain, oh man, we're going to move. No. Problems in our lives become mountains. That's right. Amen. Oh, amen. That's good. Problems in our life. You pray, believing in the name of Jesus, and watch that mountain. Is yes. That's what I love. It's in scripture. If you think I'm lying to you, it's there. It says, test me in this. Test me in this. What other guy wants you to sit around and say, test me? You know? No, but he's willing. Because he knows us. We, we got so caught up in the world that we, we was the saying, I believe half of what I hear and none of what I see. So we get that. We get that mentality. We get that mentality. We really do. We walk in through them doors and we see sisters and brothers speaking in tongues and we're, that's just a show. 
<laughs> I believe half of what I see. Yeah. I believe half of what I see. Wait, well, hey, pick up that scripture. You tell you, come test me in this. Don't go up there with your eyes, though, brother. Go with your heart. That's it, brother. That's it. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what I told the dude at work. That's what's too many problems with us. God doesn't. Man, when the devil tempted him, he could have sat there and showed him that he was God. He don't have to. Look at your mom, brother. You want your proof? Look at your mom. If you want proof, look at my brother. Look at my brother. He can tell you his testimony if you want proof that the Lord really does work. Brother Wadi will tell you till he's blue and purple passes out, get back up and tell you again that rehab doesn't work. Because it doesn't. You want to know why? Because how is something that's going to work, work without the word of God? Well, you know, you do these step 12, 12 step program and, and then they give you everything but truth. Really? That's the only thing that works, brother. That's the only thing that works. Amen. 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 That's the only thing that works. We're warriors. We're better than what they tell us we are. We're stronger than what they tell us we are. I'm not telling you to hate them. Amen. I'm telling you to hate the spirit that's driving them, Amen. but to love them. That's true. Yes. I had to tell that to that man, uh, the man I work with, I told you I had to give a little stake to. I told him, I'm not mad at you for not believing what I believe. I said, I'm mad at the ones that, the spirit that drove them wants to make you believe that this stuff isn't true. All right. That's what I'm mad at. Yeah. All right. Because if God loveth the sinner, I'm supposed to love it the sinner. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But I want y'all to look back and be real with yourself. I couldn't have been real with y'all tonight until I was real with myself and said, I, will. I did have a problem. You know, I'm a man. You know, man don't want to admit that we're wrong. You know, it takes, it takes a lot. It takes the Lord to sit there and break a man. You know? So that's what I'm saying. We have to be honest with ourselves. Amen. So I left that life. When my mom told me to come to church, I left that life. I left it. I said, you know what? I'm done with it. I'm done with it. It wasn't easy for me, brother. I'm, I'm being honest. It, it was hard for me. Come on. I just built a name for myself. You know, people would know me. I was walking up to people and, hey, man, when you drop a CD, man, you know, let me know. Let me know. You know, it wasn't easy for me. In Philippians 3, 13 through 14, says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those which are behind and reaching forth unto those yes. things which are before. I press forward to the mark for the prize of the high, call, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. So you go back to the purpose, remember. The definition of purpose, the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Which you go to Colossians 1, 16. Remember, which something is created. It says, for by him were all things created. There goes your purpose. There are in, that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be of thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were by him, for him. So your purpose is for him, not for the world. That's why I brought y'all Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Because we're supposed to be a light to them. That's our purpose is to be a light to them. Amen. You know, we might not fully understand this purpose. 
why Jesus says, ask and it shall be given. Yes. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Right. Ask. There's anybody in here tonight, not just the youth, that feels like they strayed away from their purpose. Maybe you've been focusing on the problems and not your purpose. Well, you might feel like you don't even have a purpose. But I'm here to tell you in Scripture, the truth is here to tell you you do have a purpose. I invite y'all, these altars, come. Come get y'all purpose, because we all, we're all a purpose. Because the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. We have a purpose. We have a purpose. We have a purpose. Come on, let's stand to our feet tonight.